Hi. Now, you should already be familiar with differentiating, say, y equals 5x cubed minus x plus 1. If you watch the earlier tutorials, it turns out to be 15x squared minus 1. The constant, remember, goes to 0. So if you're unfamiliar with that, do go back and check the earlier tutorials. Now, what I want to do is take this further. Suppose, for instance, we had the 5x cubed minus x plus 1 raised all to the power 3. It was cubed. How would we go about differentiating it then? Well, we could expand the brackets, but that's going to take a lot of time and effort. And when it comes to these examples here, well, you can't really expand them. So there must be another way. And there is. It's called the chain rule. And it's a rule that you're going to be using a lot. So it's good to practice this. You see that dy by dx equals dy by dt times dt by dx. It's as if these dt's here cancel, just leaving you with dy by dx. I'll explain what this t is in a moment, but you may see in some textbooks that this is given as another letter, say du for example, as long as you've got a du here. Now, in each of these examples here, we can write them in the form y equals a constant, which I've called a, t to the power n. And we should be familiar then with dy by dt. That will be a times the power n, and then we reduce the power by 1. So you get a n t raised to the power n minus 1. Now, each of these examples here can be expressed in this form here, where t is a polynomial. Taking this first example, for instance, if I was to let t equal the polynomial 5x cubed minus x plus 1, then can you see we can write this then in the form y equals a t to the power n. It is in fact t to the power 3. The constant a obviously is 1. And all of these examples can be written in that form, a t to the power n. This one, for instance, if I let t be the polynomial 3x squared plus 4, then what we've got here is 5 t to the power half. Remember, that the square root is represented as the power a half. So we've got 5t to the power half, where t is the 3x squared plus 4. In this example, it might not look like it's in the form at to the power n, but if I was to let t equal 2x minus 1, then we've got 3 divided by t, 3 over t. I can change that to 3t to the power minus 1. And then it's in this form here. And with this one here, if I let t be the polynomial x squared minus 3, then we've got the cube root here, so that would be to the power third. We've got 4 over t to the power third. And then I can rewrite that as 4t to the power minus a third. So again, it takes on the form y equals a t to the power n, where t is a polynomial. So let's take this first example here. Now when it comes to working out what dy by dx is, then by the chain rule we've got to do dy by dt first of all. So we've got y equals t cubed in this example. So dy by dt is going to be 3t squared. But instead of writing t squared, I'm going to just write t then as 5x cubed minus x plus 1, and then that's to the power 2, 3t squared for dy by dt. Okay, now we need to multiply it by dt by dx, so we differentiate what we nominated t to be. So if we differentiate that with respect to x, it's going to be 15x squared minus 1. So I'll just put that in there as 15x squared minus 1. 
And there we go, dy by dx. Now what I'm going to encourage you to do is not to write out something like this. It's up to you though if you want to do it, but later on you're going to find that you need to be able to do this in your head. So that's what I'm going to encourage you to do then when we come on to these next examples. When we've got y equals 5 times the root then of 3x squared plus 4. Remember that this is the same as 5 times all of 3x squared plus 4 raised to the power half. Half being the power that we use for square rooting. Now we think of this as 5t to the power half. t being the polynomial 3x squared plus 4. So when it comes to finding dy by dx, we've got to do dy by dt first of all. So if we've got y equaling 5t to the power half and you differentiate that, it'll be 5 times the power, a half, so that'd be 5 over 2. Then we would drop the power by 1. So we'd end up with 5 over 2 t to the power minus a half. So we've got 5 over 2 t, but instead of t I'm writing 3x squared plus 4. And the new power is minus a half. Then I need to multiply it by dt by dx. I multiply it by the differential of what we call t. t was 3x squared plus 4 and if I differentiate that with respect to x you're going to get 6x and the 4 just goes to 0. So we're just left with 6x. And so cleaning this up just gives me the 5 times the 6x which is 30x and then we can write 3x squared plus 4 to the power minus a half as 1 over 3x squared plus 4 to the power half or even write it with a square root sign. So you're going to have that 2 there and then you've got the square root then of all of 3x squared plus 4. And there you go. So let's have a look at this one here. You might even want to just pause the video at this stage and just have a go yourself. Now remember what I can do here is rewrite this as 3 times all of 2x minus 1 to the power minus 1. And so if I let t equal the 2x minus 1, then I've got y equals 3t to the power minus 1. So when it comes to working out dy by dx then, we need to do dy by dt first of all. So Remember, we've got y equals 3t to the power minus 1. And if you differentiate that, you're going to get minus 3t to the power minus 2. So you get minus 3. t then was 2x minus 1. And that's to the power minus 2. And then we have to do dt dx. t then was 2x minus 1. So if you differentiate that with respect to x, you just get 2. All right. And... That's essentially it, although we just need to tidy it up. And what we've got here is minus 3 times 2, which is minus 6. And it's going to be divided by 2x minus 1 squared. Okay, 2x minus 1 all to the power 2 there. Okay, so we come on to the last one now. So for this one, I can write this as 4 times and in the denominator here we've got x squared minus 3, the cube root of it. So that's x squared minus 3 to the power third but if I bring it up to the top it becomes all of x squared minus 3 to the power minus 1 third. So if I let t be equal to the x squared minus 3 then we've got y equals 4t to the power minus a third. So again, just following the chain rule, dy by dx is equal to dy by dt first of all. So if we differentiate 4t to the power minus a third, 
we end up with 4 times minus a third, which is minus 4 thirds. Drop the power by 1, so that's going to now be t to the power minus 4 thirds. t, though, is x squared minus 3, so we've got x squared minus 3 to the power minus 4 thirds. So that's dy by dt. Now we need to multiply it by dt by dx. So we differentiate what we call t, which was x squared minus 3. Differentiating that just gives us 2x. So just need to tidy this up. And what we end up with then is minus overall. And we've got the 4 times the 2x, which is 8x. And then in the denominator, We've got the 3 here, and then we've got x squared minus 3 raised to the power 4 thirds. So we've got x squared there minus 3, all to the power 4 thirds. You could write that as the cube root of x squared minus 3, all raised to the power 4. That's up to you, okay? So that's how we use the chain rule then when we are handling polynomials raised to a power, as you can see in each of these examples. Now in the next few videos, what I'm going to be doing is still using the chain rule, but showing you how to differentiate logarithmic types, exponential types, and trigonometric types. So do have a look at those, and I hope you'll find those useful too.